there was a standard that there was to be a cowboy and there was to live this life and there's honor in respecting that standard and that spirit of the of the cowboy in the West. The morals, the, the everything that went into the, the cowboy way of life is what got us to where we are. And you know, if you really look around, there's still a lot of that around still in this day. It's harder to find. I think those guys were just, just guys that, I mean, there's no other way to explain it other than they were cowboys. The West has changed, and the cowboy has come a long way, but he still selects his boots with pride. Justin, the standard of the West since 1879. The, the cowboys and my ancestors have influenced my life in so much, and I just think about what they went through 100 years ago and the sacrifices that were made and the hardships and just dealing, getting from one place to another and you know, going even 50 miles in a wagon. It, it's humbling to think about what was done to get us to where we are in our Western life today. I think a lot of credit goes back to the old school Cowboys. Nice job, Cody Webster. Oh my! We can actually make a living now being professional Cowboys. And uh, we wouldn't have any of this if it wasn't for them guys back then going off of a dare to who could ride a horse longer or who could rope a cow quicker or, you know, doctor or sort, whatever the case is. Uh, without that, we wouldn't be where we are. I grew up in Wayne, Oklahoma. Uh, it's just a small town, a uh, rural community, that a stop sign and a little store and a post office. That's about it. Maybe a thousand people. That's where me and Ashley have our ranch now, and that's where our roots are. Bullfighting was just something that was in me from the time I, I think God put that into me when I was born, you know. I always had my eyes and, and you know, always paying attention to the bullfighters, the rodeo clowns, and uh, mom would always catch me in there using her lipstick, painting my face as a clown. And get up and do a job somewhere around 180 performances a year. You know, if you break that down, that's fighting bulls every other day of the entire year. It's easy to go do that on a weekend. You know, it's easy to, to show up and, and be at a three-day deal and step in and take a bad shot and then knowing you only got to get through one more day or maybe two more days and then you've got a week to go home or maybe two weeks or maybe you've only got two shows a month, whatever goes on, but to be doing it 180 times a year brings a lot of a lot of cost that a guy's got to be willing to go through and everything that comes along with that the travel grind I think really defies uh, who we are and what we what we stand for and, and what we believe in what I think it takes to be a, a champion is uh, just your effort and your determination. I think consistently pursuing excellence. The day that you kind of hold back and are content with where you're at, that's the Here day that you start pulling. Right that's his best trip. Sometimes he goes left and he's got bang and loose. I always kind of want to have a vision and mindset of pursuing excellence. You know, what can I do better today from what I did yesterday to make me even better for tomorrow? Hard work and self-discipline is what it takes to, to achieve certain things in life. and. Uh, and I think that's the mindset of a winner and a mindset of the champion that you need to have because they're, they're always going to raise the bar, they're always going to work hard and, and also it's, it's a reflection and to the younger generation of if they're ever looking up to somebody, you know, 
over time they see how you carry yourself and how you how, what your work ethic is like and, and that trickles down so consistently pursuing excellence and not being uh, content with where you're at so i grew up in a small town in idaho in dubois idaho and uh, i lived there through elementary junior high and then i moved actually over to wyoming uh, my freshman year in high school to live with my dad and kind of more so to pursue the rodeo career Growing up was great. Both my brothers played sports, and I played sports. So we were outdoor type family. Uh, we were always camping, fishing, hiking, you know, tubing, doing anything in any type of season. So um, I grew up in the outdoors and the mountains and hunting and fishing. And, you know, as I reflect back on my childhood and I, and I loved every minute of it. And, you know, I was involved in 4-H and the scouts and went through different programs there to learn how to survive in the wilderness if needed to be or learn how to you know catch and cook my own fish and hunt and always entertaining around the household and my mom uh, just the one of the most caring women or woman that i know in my life she's been there for me from day one to to this day for a long time she's never thrilled that i chose the bullfighting world looks to the left got against the wall can't make it now comes around he's got a good seat he's pumping he's good now the bullfighters are earning their money they are earning their but over time, money. she's she's got a piece of it, and she she enjoys it. I think maybe just as much, if not more, than I do. And my dad, uh, that's really the the big loophole that I got into rodeo. Um, he fought bulls for a lot of years, and he still works the barrel a little bit to this day. And um, but I started going with him in I think '96. I'd go with him in the summer and go experience uh, different rodeos, different events and venues. And um, so he's always been a great supporter. Um, he's you know, mentor me in the, in the rodeo parts and, you know, always try to help me out when he could. And, and uh, he always keeps up with my whereabouts now. And um, just like I said, both mom and dad, a lot of great love and support. Um, you know, they've done pretty much everything they possibly could for me in my life. And, you know, I know we live in a crazy world and a lot of people expect things given to them, but uh, I was always raised to, to work for what you get. And, uh, you know, there's gonna be good days, but there's also gonna be some some bad and tough days too but you know you can't sit and fret on the past you keep working keep working hard put your best foot forward and and uh, what you put into it is what you'll get out of Some of the standards that I carry over into my training or my competition on my horses is the love of animals. I think, you know, that's, that's come from a hundred years ago of, of people, you know, respecting and, and appreciating what animals bring. I wouldn't be here without my animals and, uh, you know, I, I do expect a lot from my animals, but I expect a lot from myself too. And I want to work hard and I, you know, want my horses to work hard and try their best too. But I also appreciate what they've given me and you never take anything for granted. I think that's one of the biggest things that in life it, itself, but you can't take for granted of, of what you have and in, in the, the horses that I've been able to ride. I've always, as a rider, tried to have really good hands when I'm asking my horse to do something, not uh, be too forceful or, or heavy handed. And I honestly tell myself a lot, mind in the middle. And I think, you know, being a balanced rider is so important, especially when you're going, you know, as fast as you can and then you're, you're changing directions, it, not getting your horse off balance where they have to wait for you to catch up. And so I've just really tried to be a balanced rider and I, I work at it, I think, at a young age, I was put on a lot of different horses just to, to ride and, and learn. I rode bareback and, you know, just being a kid. And uh, But I, I do really feel like being a quiet rider is really important. When I think about the standard of the West, I think about the camaraderie that they would have had with um, each other and that um, you have with your neighbors 
that uh, the respect, the family values that were established and the importance of family to, um, you know, people of, of the old and today and it's passed on through generations. My parents uh, have influenced my career a lot. Uh, my dad made the NFR, the first NFR in Dallas, Texas in the calf roping. My mom made the finals in the bar racing three years in a row in the 70s. Rodeo was never their profession. It was kind of something they did on the side, but they both loved to compete and have competed many, many years. And that's where I, I got my love of competition is from both of them. And uh, my dad still competed up until his late 70s. My family has been in the cranberry business for many years. I, uh, you know, it's been part of my life. And uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe, my dad does not own Ocean Spray. Uh, he grows cranberries uh, and sells them to Ocean Spray that is a co-op. And so he is a shareholder and there are, you know, hundreds of shareholders. And so um, that is something that, you know, I always have to correct people when they say, I knew I wanted to be a bar racer at a very young age. I honestly never thought I would have the career that I've had, but I did want to make the NFR one time. And that was my goal uh, from being, you know, 10, 11 years old. I would play on my stick horse and that's, I, I wanted to be running down the alleyway at the Thomas and Mac. And I've made it 19 times and they all are very special to me. It's just a way of life, you know, it's the morals. You don't have to be a, a cowboy to actually be a cowboy in my eyes. I mean, somebody that works hard, somebody that, that is always caring and putting their best foot forward and, and being somebody that uh, just overall cares about people. You know, I think is I think you got cowboy in you for that. And, uh, you know, there's no, just no really no other way to really explain it, I don't think, other than it's just a good-hearted person that wants to work hard and do good.